the cemetery. Behind its discreet neighbourhood walls appears was one of the strange and last shelters of dreams and illusions, of that which is different and unknown, of that which is extraordinary and magic. of the remains of Little Nelly, the unofficial patron saint of Cork. Dr John Buckley says devotion to the five-year-old who died in 1908 remains very strong, but people aren't able to visit her gravesite because the lands are locked up. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, GV here. So today I'm in the Good Shepherd Convent here in Cork City, and it's also called Sunday as well. And it used to be an old um, mother and baby home. So I'm here today to tell you all the story about Ellen Organ, also known as Little Nelly. So this is the Good Shepherd Convent here, where Little Nelly spent the last remainder of her days before she passed away at the tender age of five years old. So I believe a couple of years ago the convent here had a bit of a, an arson attack on the convent. There was a fire here And a lot of the convent, as you can see, the roof and stuff there got very, very damaged. Ellen Organ was born on the 24th of August 1903. Known as Little Nelly of Holy God, was an Irish child venerated by some in the Roman Catholic Church for her precocious spiritual awareness and alleged mystical life. Nellie was born in Waterford City, Ireland, the daughter of William Organ and Mary Ahern. She was the youngest of four children. While baptised Ellen, she was always called Nellie. Her father had been a labourer, but earning very little, he had joined the army in 1897. In 1905, he was transmitted to Spike Island an island fort situated in Cork Harbour. Here, while the family hoped for better times, Ellen's mother Mary fell very ill, and for over a year she struggled to raise her children, and her health declined. In January 1907, she died of tuberculosis with four children, all under the age of nine. William found it impossible to raise them and maintain his job. A helpful neighbour helped from time to time, but he was beginning to feel the strain. Meanwhile, Ellen Organ, already a delicate child, was displaying signs of disability. It seems a serious fall as a baby had left its mark. Her spine had become crooked. Her hips and back out of joint caused her constant pain. And as she grew, she became unable to sit up straight. William finally realised he could not care for the children by himself and in May 1907 he put each of his four children into care. Ellen and her sister Mary were sent first to a hospital run by the Sisters of Mercy. The two girls were found to be suffering from whooping cough. 
Then later they went to St. Finbar's Industrial School in Sundaswell in Cork City, administrated by the Good Shepherd Sisters. Ellen Organ lived for eight months under the care of the Good Shepherd Sisters. She spent most of her time in the infirmary. So we'll talk a little bit about Ellen's religious experiences. She loved to visit the chapel, which she called the House of Holy God, and she was fascinated by the statues and images on display, and in particular by the Stations of the Cross. When told the story of the suffering and death of Jesus, she burst into tears. It is claimed that she developed a mysterious awareness of the Blessed Sacrament. One story relates how she knew a member of staff had not been to Mass that day, even though the young woman said she had. You did not get Holy God today, Ellen said. This episode and others like it led some Catholics to believe that she had what is referred to as the mystical gift. Meanwhile, she began to claim to have visions. She related how she saw Christ usually as a little child like herself and the Virgin Mary on a number of occasions. She claimed to have seen the infant of Prague dancing for her. Her already precocious faith was growing, and those who came to know her testified to her holiness. She so impressed the sisters they began to entertain the possibility of recommend, recommending the child for the sacrament of confirmation, contacting the local bishop. He agreed and she was confirmed on the 8th of October 1907. Ellen soon began to ask to receive Holy Communion. At first the sisters hesitated. She was too young for the sacrament, wondering if she understood what the Eucharist was. They observed her at prayer in the chapel and saw that she was captivated by the tabernacle. According to the rules of the Roman Catholic Church, no child could receive Communion before a certain age. A four-year-old child was thought to be at least six years too young. The sister spoke with a Jesuit priest who ministered to the community and while he was hesitant he decided to come to speak to the child. After spending some time with Nelly he came to the conclusion that she had reached the age of reason, albeit at an extraordinarily young age. He brought the matter to the bishop's attention who, after thinking about it for a short while, consented and Ellen Organ made her first communion on the 6th of December 1907. Between December 1907 and February 1908, Ellen's health declined. She was in constant pain. Given the times, there was a little that could be done. The sisters tried to make her as comfortable as possible. Various visitors, including the Bishop of Cork, noticed her fortitude and her intense prayer life. She was constantly happy. At this stage, tuberculosis had set in and she was suffering from caries, making it difficult and painful for her to eat. She did not complain of the pain this caused her as she, instead, holding the crucifix in her small hands, contemplated the pain that Christ endured during the crucifixion, stating, Poor Holy God, poor Holy God. It was noted by the sisters and nurses that after she began receiving Holy Communion, the smell completely disappeared from her wounds. All she wanted at this stage was to receive Communion. After some four years of life, Ellen Organ died on the 2nd of February 1908. Witnesses said she appeared to see something at the foot of her bed, which caused her to smile and her eyes to well with tears. She followed that something with her eyes looking overhead, 
when she died. She was buried in St. Joseph's Cemetery in the city of Cork. When a year later, in 1909, her body was exhumed, it appeared unchanged from the day of her burial, with her limbs flexible and her dress and communion veil like new. Her grave in the public cemetery attracted visitors from all over Ireland. Authorization was given for her remains to be transferred to the cemetery of the Good Shepherd Sisters. So it's with thanks because of Ellen Organ, Little Nelly, that children all over the country today receive Holy Communion at the age of seven years old. So we'll go inside and we'll visit the final resting place of little Nelly and pay our respects to this wonderful child. So this is the grave here guys of Ellen Organ, also known as Little Nelly. And uh, people leave a number of things here, hoping that Nelly will answer their prayers and heal people. So there's a beautiful design there of a flower in the center of the grave. It's a mosaic, isn't it? It's a mosaic design. And it's actually covered to protect it. So it's actually covered here with perspex, kind of glass perspex, to keep it preserved, preserved I suppose, yeah. So you can just see, it's a shrine here, little Nelly's grave. You can see all the stuff that people are leaving here. Our Lady pictures. Statues. And all different things. Little kids shoes and teddies and beautiful picture of a girl. There. I'm not sure if that girl passed away. So this is little Nelly's grave. And as I was saying in the story about the child of Prague, so we have the child of Prague statue here on little Nelly's grave and the rosary beads. So we'll read the inscription here on Nelly's grave and it says, in loving memory of little Nelly of Holy God, who died the 2nd of February, 1908, rest in peace. So you can just see from the cemetery here at the Good Shepherd, you can see Cork City in the, di in the distance. And beautiful views. And um, that's the convent, as I was saying earlier, there ahead.
So guys, there's a, a metal spiral stairs. Some are in the building there and it's just not safe to go in to have a look. Um, but I believe it's online. So I will add it to the video. And it's the stairs that led up to little Nellie's room where she spent her final days and sadly passed away. stairway which leads to little Nellie's room. It's 108 years of age. The room has been vacant for 77 years. Its last occupant, a little child of four and a half, died here on the 2nd of February 1908. So guys, I'll end the video here and uh, thank you very much for watching. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, hit the notification bell and subscribe to the channel. And rest in peace, Ellen Organ, also known as Little Nelly of Holy God. So guys, thanks for watching the video. Um, and I'll leave it there. So take care. God bless. Talk to you all soon.